Hello everybody. Welcome to today's calculus mini lecture on derivatives of inverse functions. In an earlier mini lecture we have seen how to differentiate some given functions using the limit definition of derivatives, which is f prime of x equals the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h as h approaches zero. We looked at functions defined by x squared, square root of x, x cubed, cube root of x, ln of x, and t to the power of x. You may agree that these derivatives are, in most cases, not exactly easy or straightforward, but note that they come in pairs of functions inverse to each other. Since the derivative is defined geometrically as a slope of the tangent line to the graph of a function at a given point, and since there is a relationship between the graphs of inverse functions, one is obtained from the other by flipping, reflecting at the curve y equals x. You may ask, is there a relationship between derivatives of inverse functions? The answer is yes. And this relationship can spare us a lot of work with the limit definition of the derivative. To find the derivative of f of x equals cube root of x, all we need is the derivative of the inverse function g of x equals x cubed. All we need to find the derivative of f of x equals e to the power of x is the derivative of the inverse function g of x equals ln of x. Look at an example on the graph of f of x equals e to the power of x, displayed in bold blue, and of its inverse function g of x equals ln of x, displayed in bold red. Remember that since both functions are inverse to each other, the graph of each one can be obtained from the graph of the other by reflecting it about the straight line y equals x, which is drawn in black. Note also that the reflecting about this straight line means interchanging the x and the y coordinate. The inverse function exchanges x and y, input and output. If f of 0.5 equals 1.66, then g of 1.66 equals 0.5. Next, we choose an arbitrary point on the graph of the function f, for instance 0.5, 1.66 again. The tangent line to f at this point is a thin blue straight line. Its slope is equal to f prime of 0.5, about 1.66. Now look at the blue graph of f, the point 0.5, 1.66, and the blue tangent to f at this point. All this is reflected above the diagonal y equals x now. We get the red graph, a point, and the red tension to the graph at the point. Of course, the reflected graph is that of g, and the reflected point is 1.6,0.5. Those are reflections of the tangent lines of f are the tangent lines of g, but at different points, at different x values. What is the slope of the reflected tangents? How are the slope of a straight line and of its reflection related? Take two points x1, y1 and x2, y2 on the original straight line. Its slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The reflected straight line goes through the reflected points y1, x1 and y2, x2 with entries interchanged and has therefore a slope of x2 minus x1 over y2 minus y1, which is just the reciprocal of the slope of the original line. So in a sense, the derivative of the inverse of a function at some point x is a reciprocal of the derivative of the original function, but at another point c. We have g prime of x equals 1 over f prime of c. But if the reflected point has coordinates x and g of x, the original point has coordinates g of x, comma, x, which is g of x, comma, f of g of x. Therefore, c equals g of x equals f minus 1 of x. And we get the formulas. The derivative of the inverse function of x, g prime of x equals 1 over f prime of g of x, which is 1 over f prime of f minus 1 of x. Let's apply this formula to the three examples mentioned. First, take g of x equals square root of x. 
It is the inverse function of the function f of x equals x squared when the domain is restricted to non-negative x, since otherwise f would not be a one-to-one -one function. We know that f prime of x equals 2x, therefore the derivative of the square root function is g prime of x equals 1 over 2 times g of x, which is 1 over 2 times square root of x. For the second example, g of x equals cube root of x is the inverse function of f of x equals x cubed. Since f prime of x equals 3 times x squared, we get g prime of x equals 1 over 3 times g of x squared, which is equal to 1 over 3 times cube root of x squared, which is equal to 1 third x to the power of negative 2 over 3. In our final example, g of x equals e to the power of x and f of x equals ln of x are inverse to each other. If we know that f prime of x equals 1 over x, then we get g prime of x equals 1 over 1 over g of x, which is equal to 1 over 1 over e to the power of x, which is equal to e to the power of x. If, on the other hand, we don't know the derivative of the logarithmic function, but rather know that g prime of x equals e to the power of x, then we can calculate the derivative of the logarithmic function. f prime of x equals 1 over e to the power of f of x, which is equal to 1 over e to the power of ln of x, which is equal to 1 over x, since e to the power of ln of x equals x. This tool for calculating the derivatives of functions via the derivative of their inverse functions is most impressive right after the introduction of the derivative using limits. Then it cuts down the work by about 50%. However, later when the elementary rules for differentiation are introduced, the use of our tool is less impressive. For instance, four of the functions above are power functions and can be easier differentiated using power rule. Also, you should realize that the power rule comes usually without proof in calculus. In particular, after introduction of the chain rule, the inverse function differentiating formula becomes obsolete. If you haven't learned the chain rule yet, let me say goodbye to you. For the others, let me quickly demonstrate how the chain rule formula immediately implies our result. Let f and g be inverse to each other meaning f of g of x equals x. So the derivative of this composed function h of x equals f of g of x is just 1, but by chain rule it is also equal to the product of outer derivative f prime of g of x and inner derivative g prime of x, thus f prime of g of x times g prime of x equals 1, and g prime of x equals 1 over f prime of g of x. Thank you for your attention.